I'd like to quote one little verse and then tell two interrelated stories. The verse is from Proverbs 10 and verse 12, and it says, Hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all sins. Uh, Clark, writing about this verse, uh, especially hatred stirs up strife, he writes, It seeks for occasions to provoke enmity. It delights in embroils. On the contrary, love conciliates, removes aggravations, puts the best construction on everything, and pours water, not oil, upon the flame. Let me paint two scenarios for you. Two friends of mine, one very new, one an older friend, and these are struggles that we all face. But uh, just in the last week or so, I had occasion to interact with both of these men. In the one case, you would recognize this person as being uh, gentlemanly and well-raised, <laughs> no tattoos, no uh, belligerence, gracious in speech, um, middle class, hardworking, lots of attributes, lots of good characteristics. But as we spoke, um, he began to unfold in his heart all this bitterness and uh, anguish. He was, he was at the point of collapse. And as we talked, I began to share with him, brother, you know, you've been putting all of these hurts that are years old, many of them, throwing them in the back of the pickup truck. You never take them to the, the dump. You just keep accumulating all these hurts. And now you've got a 10-ton load on a quarter-ton truck, and the, the tires are blowing. And you need to forgive. You need to sit in a chair somewhere and allow the Spirit of God to bring all of these issues to you, and you need to forgive. That's part one. I mean, that's, in a sense, the easy part. The hard part is not only that you don't hold these things against people, but then you turn around and you do good to them. You pray for them. You actively overcome evil with good. It's the only way forward for you. You're going to be crushed under this. When we forgive, we break chains, chains that hold us to those events and to those people and to those hurts, and we can't let them go. Forgiveness is not an option with the Christian. The only question I need to ask is, is there enough on the cross to cover this? If there is, I know what grace is. I show it to myself all the time. I need to show it to others. And love covers all sins. In other words, the desire of love is to put it out of the way and not keep a record of wrongs and not bring it up again. And in the words of Clara Barton, when she heard about something negative or she heard about some person who had been negative towards her and she made a positive comment about that person and her aide said, don't you remember what that person did to you? And she said with a smile, I not only remember I distinctly remember forgetting. And that's, that's covering up. That's, that's love covering sin. Now, it doesn't mean that I'm saying it never happened. It doesn't mean that it, I'm saying it didn't hurt me. It doesn't mean that the person gets automatically into the good of forgiveness until they repent and deal with it in their own hearts. They're living with that burden on their hearts too. But I can be free from it. I can turn it over to the Lord. As Peter tells us, using the example of the Lord Jesus, who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not. Committed it to him who judges righteously. When we commit it to the Lord, say, he's my collection agency. I'm not going to chase after this stuff. I'm going to leave it with the Lord. And then our souls come to a state of rest. It's past. The storm is past. And that bitterness, 
is lanced and all that stuff that's been just suppurating and rotting in my, in my soul can be set free and I can rest with God and say, this other person, their heart, it's God's business, it's not my business. I don't have to make them forgive. I don't have to make them feel bad, make them repent. I leave that with the Spirit of God. From my point of view, it's forgiven. There's enough in the cross to cover this too. By contrast, I was down at the prison on Saturday, and I sat down with a man named Steve, covered in tattoos, and on his forearm, in large letters, the word hate. He had been a member of the Aryan nation, white supremacist. He said, I, I was weaned on this. I grew up, everyone around me hated blacks. If you had asked me, why do I hate them? I don't know. We said they didn't have souls. We just hated them because we hated them. He said, I came into prison and it was, it was a war. And if you didn't belong to a gang, if you weren't affiliated, your life was worth nothing. And he said, we were constantly in fights, constantly attacking each other. And I just got so weary of it, exhausted, sick and tired of being sick and tired. And I got down in my prison cell and I asked God to send me someone with some hope. <laughs> he said, you know, we didn't have black preachers around there. But the first person to come to my cell was a black preacher. And he told me about God's forgiveness and his love. And I sort of ignored him. But he sent me another one and another. And six black preachers who came to his cell and brought him the message of God's love. And finally, he bowed his knees to the king of love. And the Lord transformed his heart. What? tremendous power in love. Love is the greatest force in the universe. That's the point of the book of Revelation. A little lamb's going to win the day against all these wild animals, the great red dragon, all the rest of them. Because love is greater than power. We will do things for love that you could never coerce us to do any other way. So, Here's a little watchword. Hatred stirs up strife, but love covers sins. It's my privilege to say, as far as I'm concerned, the cross covers that too. And I'm prepared to show the kind of grace to others that God is daily showing to me. The Lord bless you and enrich you and may you be one of those who goes out seeking to be peacemakers by pouring out the love of God, the love of God which is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who is given to us.